Welcome back to the Love and Dubai show. Our next guest is deeply passionate about, about preventative healthcare, gut health, and overall wellness. So today, what we've done is we've curated some of our favorite health topics, and we're going to get expert advice from her. Please welcome to the show, Kiara Sidenider. Thank you so much for being here on this beautiful Thank day. Thank you so much. And good morning, ladies. Good It's morning. Thank you so much. You're going to be answering all of mine and Casey's questions. And the first question is, why is gut health so important? Like if you can maybe, um, for someone focusing on their health, what are the first steps that we should take to improve? Yes, okay. amazing. Well, gut health is a hot topic lately. As mm-hmm. we know, there's a lot of research going on because it's a recent discovery how important gut is for our, our health. Uh, again, All our food goes through the gut and uh, there's a lot of uh, discoveries in terms of understanding how much of our immune system is related to the gut. Over 60% of our immune system depends on the gut. So if we eat well or we eat bad, of course our immune system is going to affect it. So that's one. And then again, serotonin production. Serotonin, I, I believe you all know, it's the happiness hormone. So the majority of it is not produced in the brain, it's produced in the gut. So also our mood, our mental health, the mental stability is directly linked to the gut. And there's the vagus nerve, which is basically the longest and the biggest nerve in our body that connects the brain to the gut. So there's a direct communication that goes from the brain to the gut and from the gut to the brain. So there's so much uh, information there. So thank you for sharing. And I just feel like in the last like 10 years, I've just been, we've all been plated so much more information about mm-hmm. health and wellness. And I would just like to know a little bit more about you in terms of like, how did you get started in the industry? Okay, thank you. Well, uh, it's been a long journey, let's say. I started maybe in my early 20s, uh, when I actually, yeah, at the end of my teenagers, just working out because I started working, so I just needed to have something moving, and that's when I actually discovered my passion back in Italy. And then I started doing all my certifications uh, into nutrition, into fitness, just out of passion as a side, uh, side thing uh, from work. And yeah, and that's uh, how it all started. And then uh, in my late 20s, I started suffering of um, specific uh, health concerns such as chronic uh, fatigue, uh, uh, Crohn's disease. Here I started a long um, journey into understanding what was exactly going on. And yeah, that's when I uh, I, I went deeper into the whole study of uh, um, supplements, uh, longevity, and uh, how to uh, stay healthy. And that's how also my startup uh, then started, Beauty Treats. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I have this like strong belief because that For example, like for, for me, I used to eat so badly and so unhealthy, and then I had to like go through a lot to actually realize that I need to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. So you are, of course, an advocate for a healthy lifestyle. Did you face any personal struggles and challenges that actually caused you to go through that healthy route? Yeah, exactly. So as I said, I think my biggest turning point was... Uh, the health struggles that I faced, it was around COVID time. So four years ago, you know, I I think it's always a combination of different factors. It's not just uh, the way you nourish yourself. It's also uh, the impact that mine has on your system. So if you're living also challenges, challenging times, that all affects, of course, uh, your body. And that was maybe what happened to me. But the discovery of uh, specific um, health conditions such as Crohn's disease, chronic fatigue, uh, hip impingement made me really say, okay, what can I do by myself, because medication, medications are not working, uh, the, the doctor's uh, diagnosis are always different, and I don't know what to do. So I started digging into myself and understanding, okay, what can I adjust with my nutrition? And there were things that I could definitely adjust. What can I plug into as supplements that can help me? And they worked. So uh, loads of these things, of course, what can I do for my mental state to actually, you know, relieve stress patterns? That's, that's all... Uh, Helpful. So let's for then to supplements, for example, because I hear the word supplements so often and I just find the whole industry overwhelming. Mm. Um, so how did you kind of overcome that and understand what supplements were right for you and, and do they work? Yeah, good question. Uh, <laughs> yes, so much information, almost a lot of misinformation as well. Uh, one of the uh, main supplements that uh, helped me into my journey of adjusting my digestive system was collagen. And this is how, again, my uh, idea for healthy and anti-inflammatory snacks started because I wanted to give something to people whereby they can have healthy snacks that 
are completely cutting on everything that are in snacks uh, lately. Sugars, gluten, processed oils, seed oils, chemicals, preservatives, and I wanted to introduce healthy antioxidants, healthy fats, and healthy amino acids. And uh, collagen is an amino acid chain, and this is uh, why I wanted to introduce that in, into the snacks. But then again, um, there is so much to talk about supplements. We, we would need three hours. Yeah. I don't know how much time we have today. <laughs> but if we have to simplify, um, there's the three mains that I always like to talk about that everyone should take, no matter their age, their size, if they have lack or not, because our body does not produce them. And they are vital for our uh, mental uh, health, for our metabolic uh, function and, uh, and our energy energy levels. And these, these three are omega-3 fatty acids. Then we have uh, magnesium and vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And they're crucial because our bodies then don't produce it. And yeah, we just need them every day. <laughs> well, I want to talk about, um, let me call this food health trends, right? There's like cutting uh, certain foods, 8 to 20 rule, uh, and the list goes on and on. What are your thoughts about that? Because like I see it personally like, all over TikTok. Yeah. And then some other people go like, oh, yeah, you know, don't follow um, nutritional uh, people on TikTok because they are a scam and they just want. Yeah. So what do you think of that? Yeah. Do they actually work? Are they actually true? Yeah. So also here we have to do a sort of uh, uh, umbrella conversation in the sense that of course, we uh, have to distinguish, generally speaking, from what is healthy and unhealthy. And this is the most important thing. Then when it goes into the healthy conversation of what, you know, is better to do to enhance our performance, to enhance our metabolic rate, to enhance our energy, there's so many things, you know, that we can talk into this topic. For example, you know, having a can of Coke Zero is not going to cause you cancer tomorrow. But of course, we know that if you drink it every single day, maybe you have three or four or five cans a day, then of course, that is going to be really damaging your, your health span because it has aspartame, it has so many chemicals, so many colorings, and so that's not healthy in the long run. So it comes always into understanding, okay, do I have to do it this tip now as my primary rule to live healthier? Or is there many other, maybe other things that I need to adjust for myself before mm -hmm. I actually go into the fasting, uh, um, you know, uh, diet or into that specific thing that makes me cut on something. So, yeah. What about, you know, this is such a trending topic and we spoke about it earlier on in the week, but I'd like your thoughts on Ozempic for weight loss. If someone comes along and they say, look, I just want to shift a couple of pounds. I'm not overweight, but I want to shift a couple of pounds. Would you recommend a short trial period for that? A short trial period of Ozempic. Manjaro. Yeah, absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, it's a good question. And again, everyone, especially even if it, it comes to cutting down a couple of uh, kilograms, they just want the easy cut, the easy solution. And then that's how many people, so maybe as you're saying, actually went for uh, these medications, all GLP-1 uh, um, medications such as Manjaro, um, there's other Wigoi and Ozempic, they're all supporting um, to control blood sugar levels and again mainly directed to diabetic people. So first of all we already have to take this into consideration. Then if it comes to people that want to go for a weight loss but they do not have diabetes, well there's so many other things that we need to adjust first because first there's a relearning of your habits. So yes, these medications do help people if they're very overweight because it really gets them uh, into shedding off extra kilograms of their weight, but then they need a reintroduction into their own normal lifestyle without the medication. Mm. And that's when the hard point comes because they need to relearn, first of all, their um, they, they need to re rewire also their brain uh, uh, circuits by which they need to get used to eating maybe less amounts. and. There, there needs to be an important conversation then also into training because everyone that goes in, onto these type of medications loses a lot of muscle mass. And losing a lot of muscle mass means that you will be able to automatically burn less calories. So it means that your nutrition will need to be so much more restricted. So it's so important to do a proper introduction plan afterwards. Interesting. Well, let, let's say I want to improve my gut health. What are like... How can I begin by improving my gut health? Like what are the steps to have a healthier gut? Well, 
eat healthy whole foods is the mm -hmm. rule number one. So um, cutting all the junk food, all processed foods, and especially all foods that do contain sugars, seed oils, and gluten. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes to gluten, there's some people that are more sensitive to it, and you do not need to be celiac to be gluten sensitive. So again, understanding how much gluten you're eating in your daily life, if this is already causing some troubles for you, would be a good check to do. And then again, understanding how to combine it with specific foods and understanding that the first primary type of food that we need to eat to mm -hmm. make us full and satiated are vegetables, especially cruciferous vegetables, fibers, healthy fats, and we need a lot of them for our cognitive function, and proteins, because that's the building block of our body. This is going to sound like such a stupid question, but I hear it so often like uh, about gluten intolerances. What is gluten? <laughs> what is gluten? <laughs> That's a good question. And also, again, gluten is in mo most of the grains. Not all of them, most of the grains. What it does, it's a, it contains a protein that is called gliadin. And this protein actually acts uh, as an opiate when it comes to uh, into our body so it uh, yes <laughs> it, it go it basically um, feeds into the same um, uh, how you say a reward system as when we take opiates in our brain that's why it's so addictive wow. and this is why once we go on that path we actually have a very hard time to detoxify from everything that is pizza bread and pasta because that's just uh, how addicting this is. So that's this is why usually why. we have to go through, also with my clients, we go through a detoxifying process that is like the sugar detox. But by sugar, I do not only intend sweets, desserts. I do intend all types of sugars that are contained in carbohydrates as well. And in this case, gluten is the main um, is the main addicting cause, and it's also more inflammatory than other type of grains that are okay to eat, such as rice, quinoa, buckwheat. That's sorry, yes. I just my mind is yes. I finally understand bread is addictive, and that's <laughs> why it's pasta, it's pizza, and it's and sushi is even more addictive. And you know what? Because they always put sugar with it, so this is why everyone loves sushi. Oh my god! Okay, <laughs> I mean, disaster. Um, Casey knows I do have like gluten intolerance, and my dad all the time tells me, Farah, like you do back have. then, yes, back then. Uh, he goes like, but we never had these issues back then, mm -hmm. not in the old times. So how can you like explain that? Because like it is yeah. true. Like how my my parents, you know, like they lived throughout their lives, and all that they were eating like gluten and yeah. a lot of like things that right now, um, it's like every I don't know how yeah. much per like pe people have gluten intolerances, lactose yes. intolerances, and the list goes on and on. Yes, exactly. There is a again uh, uh, two things that we can talk about is first of all of course it's always how much you are exposing yourself to the consumption of uh, uh, foods with gluten because again the more we age of course the, the more we become sensitive because of a general combination of, of factors that we and 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 this is why why we can produce more sensitivity throughout the years especially if we've consumed a lot of, of uh, gluten th into our early age then again as you said also we are we were seeing much more of these mm. digestive issues, generally speaking, gluten intolerance, celiac disease, allergies, uh, uh, IBS, uh, Crohn's disease. So why is that? Why? Because again, we, our microbiome has been exposed to eating so much more processed foods, and this has altered the microbes into our gut. So mm. even if you now there's been an interesting research that where they showed that our microbiome nowadays is completely different as opposed to uh, indigenous tribes that are living now, right now in Africa, for example. So it's not something that we're talking about, you know, some generations ago. It's completely different because we are just eating less of healthy, clean, whole foods. We just used to go and buy everything packaged at the grocery. Also, most of the uh, foods nowadays are packed in plastic. So all of this unfortunately harms our uh, bacteria richness. And this is why we need to look into that as well. Wow. So surprising. And, and we're jumping from topic to topic because we have a lot, a lot to get through. Um, but some of the videos you drop are always surprising. And your recent share about coffee in the morning mm. shook me for sure because the first thing I do every single morning is drink men lots and lots of coffee. So for people who love coffee. <laughs> so for people who do drink coffee in the morning, what are we doing wrong? Yeah. So 
again, it's always a, a subjective conversation that we have to do. Not everyone is necessarily sensitive to coffee, same as to gluten. So if I don't have any problem and I can eat, uh, drink eight, ten coffees a day and also go to sleep and sleep like a baby, that's fine. Of course, over a certain amount, it's still acidic for your body. So this is the first thing that I want people to understand that coffee creates acidity in our stomach. So if we drink over a certain amount uh, of coffees a day, especially after 2 p.m., of course, it's going to be less likely also for us to fall asleep at night. So that's also one. But for our digestive system, having coffee, especially in an empty stomach, is creating more acidity. So it can create inflammation, can create just bloating or gas in, in our stomach. So it's always important to understand, okay, let me have maybe some nuts before, some uh, some fats or some, some protein, some breakfast, or eat, drink the coffee with the breakfast. And then again, if I really want to nourish my gut right in the first hour, in the first few hours of the morning after my fast, where the digestive system is even more ready to absorb good nutrients, then let me have other foods that are actually going to nourish it better. And this is why maybe you have seen, like, I usually love to drink lemon juice because people think that it is acidic, but this is not acidic. Lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, these are the only foods that are acidic, but when they come in the body, they become alkaline. So they support our natural body pH. Mm, so important. That's actually very interesting. Um, I see all the time on social media, like a lot of supplements, recommendations like, oh yeah, I start with the supplement and then I take the supplement and then the supplement. It's like a total of like 10 supplements. And I think in a way like that is kind of like a lot. So what is a mistake or like mistakes that people are doing when choosing supplements? Yeah. Um, well, again, supplements are something that is added onto our nutrition. So they, they do help absolutely a lot, but they always do help on top of how our nutrition looks like. So again, if we run into supplements the same way we run into medications, it's never going to be the solution. First of all, we need to understand, okay, what do I need to do my, the rest of the day and the rest of the foods that I eat that can actually give me the right nutrients. And this is understanding nutrient-rich foods that give me the best amount. And then, of course, integrating what I'm, I'm missing. Then, of course, if I have specific deficiencies and also there are studies that show that 60%, over 60% of the people do have some deficiencies, vitamin deficiencies. This is very important to look at because vitamins are also main indicators for our health. So understanding if we have some certain deficiencies, of course, supplement with them. If we do not have certain deficiencies, understanding what we would like to work on mainly that can support our diet mm -hmm. because again we can still eat as nutrient as healthy as we want that still we only have that amount of calories that we can eat for our bodies during the day and also our nutrients our foods are a bit more nutrient depleted than just a couple of generations ago or since the industrial revolution because the soils are also less fertile less uh, nutrient rich so interesting. Um, speaking of what we would like to work on to support our body, so I went to a new gym this week and they had this really fancy machine. I've never done it before. And it was like a body analysis. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. So you, I don't know if you've done it before, you stand on it and you put your thumbs yeah. there. Yeah. And within about yeah, so. 10 seconds, they're able to tell you the water in your body, the protein in your body. You're nodding because you know what it is. But to me, I was mind blown. <laughs> However, when it was done, it was kind of handed to me and we kind of talked through it. But it, it kind of like... I can read it, but I don't know how to go from here. So <laughs> let's have a look. Could we have a right. look? And if you could give let's me some tips, that would be amazing. Okay, guys, we're going to reveal our case's <laughs> numbers here. The age is this wrong, by the way. I told him I was 34 or 35. I don't, what do you yeah, write? 30, I'm 35. Yeah. I, okay. You know. So you're one, one year younger That's already. Fine. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. You can then chronological age. So what we can see here, um, well, again, here, you have always a combination of uh, uh, the how you know the fat and the muscles are divided into your body, but the main index that you always want to look at, of course, is uh, the um, body fat percentage, skeletal muscle mass. So, mm. again, now this is the first analysis that you did already, right? Right. So. What is interesting always to look at is the progression that you will have. So let's say you're going now for a specific program, nutrition plan, exercise plan. 
then we want to see how good you're progressing. And what we always want to have a look at, and again, we are starting with you from perfect numbers, okay? Perfect percentage. You already <laughs> must know that because there's definitely nothing specific to work at. So, for I example, know. if we look... Oh, there's, there's all sorts of numbers there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we look, for example, the body fat percentage, we have a 17.6. 17.6 for women is the one of the most healthiest percentages you can have because wow. for women it comes from around 16% percent to 25 30 percent and that always depends always on body type we need to always understand the ratios of body fat and muscle mass because it's very subjective some people with less body fat percentage sometimes um, they, they look still that they need to lose more because it depends on the structure structure and height but again 16 to 25 percent is the average and so you're also very close to the lowest end and we also need to consider that you're a woman so compared to men men uh, have even a lower body fat percentage. So in this case, that is completely fine. So never compare yourself, for example, to the results that you see from a man, because that's completely different. Mm -hmm. And then again, uh, skeletal muscle mass is good. So what we want to see now is in your next uh, um, uh, results, if we are able to possibly maybe work into increasing a bit the muscle mass, that might be a bit the case. That's stronger. Okay. Yes, that's yes. the plan. So, and then, since your goal, I believe, is not losing, about losing weight, then it's just maybe maintaining the same weight, but increasing the muscle mass. Maybe if we manage some points, dropping some points of uh, body fat percentage, but again, just for the ratio of more muscle mass that is going to improve your metabolic rate, improve your longevity, because muscle mass is the number one uh, that driver of, of longevity. Really? So, yes. Yes. That's so interesting. So, yeah, and I don't know if there's the intestinal uh, visceral fat, which is also crucial, crucial, crucial um, number to check, but I don't see it now. And this is very important again. Okay, here we have visceral fat level. This is very good to see because it's basically not the fat that we have under the skin tissue, it's the fat that we have in our organs. So this is even more important to look at. And uh, yeah, because it's <laughs> hindering more our health span. And okay. uh, the ratio is one to nine, you have a level four, so it is fine. We can maybe drop a point, also look at that, so depending on how you eat. This is very important, more than uh, uh, exercising. Oh wow. wow! Thank you Casey so much! Casey healthy! Well, yes. uh, it's good to know because I was handed it and there were so many numbers, so now I need to build muscle. Yes. And that's so interesting how you said that muscle mass is the key to longevity, yes. so if I want to live longer, absolutely, do yes. weights. Yes, Simple absolutely. Yes, we have exactly. <laughs> we have to because it's going to maintain again uh, our bone structure and it's also going to improve our meta metabolic rate. And again, it's uh, it's what will help us also when aging from falls, from injuries. And yeah, that's, uh, that's wow. so interesting. I mean, honestly, there are like a lot of questions, but I have a question. If you can tell us about um, beauty tweets. Yes. Tell us about your business, Beauty Treats, and its mission and, and, you know, health and beauty. Yeah. So, yeah, as I said, initially, um, this story started exactly from my health condition. So I was struggling with digestive issues, with a lot of pain, bloating, bleeding, and other things that are maybe not nice to mention today. But anyway, this is how I started my journey into understanding, okay, what can I do for myself into adjusting my nutrition? That can I, and I was already a healthy person. I was... Uh, um, but again, what can I do in my, my nutrition to adjust to feel better? And that's when I started just, again, cutting maybe carbs in the morning mm -hmm. on an empty stomach, uh, cutting a bit on gluten, cutting more on the sugars. I am a huge, I used to be a huge sugar fan and then I managed to, to switch that. So these are little things that, that really help. And um, again, introducing more supplements. And this is how I went to, okay, I would like to sort of do something that can be there for other people that have had my same uh, issues as well. So people that have been struggling with all sorts of digestive issues, people that have been struggling with diabetes as well. So I want to sort of educate people that snacking, eating is not wrong. It's understanding what are the type, uh, the right type of foods that we need to introduce. And this is why beauty treats do only have rich antioxidants, all different type of uh, powders such as ginger, spirulina, matcha. So rich antioxidants that help really to detox our, our system. They have healthy fats and uh, they do not have any gluten. 
any sugar, any preservatives. Nice. So um, this is the way to go if you want to have something that is nourishing and doesn't create more cravings or blood sugar spikes. In a, so before you leave us, uh, oh, it's 9, 17, where's the time gone? Uh, before you leave us, um, if someone uh, is watching the show and they are addicted to bread, um, what treat <laughs> on beauty treats would you recommend them today? And where could they get it? Um, we have um, crackers, pizza crackers, zatar crackers. Uh, they are a good alternative to bread because they are gluten-free and actually very, very nice, especially if you like, love zatar or the pizza flavor. These, these are actually nice. Amazing. Mm. Thank you so much. And how can people find them? Beauty Treats. There's the website. There's Deliveroo, Insta Shop, uh, Cream. Uh, you can find them in Kipsons. Uh, so, yeah. Kira, thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday morning. We really thank appreciate you so your time much. today. Thank you, Farah. Thank you, Casey. And that brings us to the end of our show. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.